Crim 2 News 10 at 10 begins now with Mark Hanrahan and Jeremy Legou. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News 10 at 10 where we give you more news in less time. We start with some breaking news tonight. An hours long SWAT standoff just wrapped up moments ago in North Spokane. A heavy police presence took over the block as police redirected cars investigated a home at West Mansfield Avenue and North Washington Street. Just a few blocks away at Mansfield and Monroe, Spokane police responded to a shooting earlier today where a person was shot and they are currently looking for the suspect. Right now it is unclear if these incidents are related. Doug Rupert, a resident near the blocked off area of the standoff, says the situation is making his family take precautions as police work to resolve the issue. My fiance has a two year old nie great niece and we're kind of keeping her in the house so she can not get too too excited about the uh, all the police and the guns. Spokane police say no arrests have been made in that case. This is the developing story. We will continue to update you as we learn more. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. A federal grand jury has indicted the dad accused of kidnapping his Pullman daughter and taking her to Mexico, and they indicted his father as well. Aaron Ong was due in court today for a hearing, but that was waived following the indictment. James Ong, Aaron's dad, is due in court tomorrow. Aaron Ong is the, in the Spokane County Jail for an international parental kidnapping charge. According to a federal criminal complaint, the FBI and Border Patrol found photos and video of Ong crossing the border on June 1st. That was two days after he was supposed to return his daughter to her mother. He was found in Mexico with his fiance. Ong's father is expected to be in federal court coming up tomorrow. A Boise inmate accused of killing a man while on the run from prison faced a judge today with a new high profile attorney. Skyler Mead is now facing the death penalty and he is now being represented by the same attorney who is defending accused Moscow murderer Brian Koberger. Court records show Mead was indicted by a grand jury in Nez Perce County back in June for first degree murder for 83 year old James Monty. In another familiar move we saw in Taylor's defense of Brian Koberger, Mead did not enter a plea this afternoon. To the charge of murder in the first degree, are you uh, prepared to enter a plea at this time or do you wish to have a delay in that plea? Your Honor, he intends to stand silent. Right. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Judge Michelle Evans entered a not guilty plea on his behalf. Meade is currently serving a life sentence for his prison escape in Ada County. The Spokane Fire Department confirming more suspicious fires were set on the Spokane South Hill overnight. Two small fires were set behind the Ace Hardware on Regal Street. These are pictures from one of those fires that came into our newsroom earlier today. Another fire was set across the street in an empty field right next to the Krem 2 studio. Spokane Fire confirmed they are investigating tonight. And earlier this month, a team was arrested for a separate arson at Squeaky's Car Wash on 29th. That's just down the street from the newly set fires. A 13 year old was arrested after being seen in the area connected to those. Two other fires were also set behind the Ace Hardware earlier in July. There was no damage to the store. Spokane Fire has not confirmed if the series of fires is connected to one suspect. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's creme.com. All right, let's switch gears, take a first look at the forecast on this Friday Eve with Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo. Jeremy, kind of a breezy start to the day. How are things looking for tomorrow? Well, as we move into the day tomorrow, we start to get a new air mass, a new weather system, and a chance of some showers over the Cascades. We still sit at 80 degrees. It's another warm one this evening. Forecast models keep having us quite a bit cooler at this hour, so I think what is more likely than what you see here is temperatures falling into the upper 60s. I'm going to go ahead and tell those forecast models what they're doing. Overall, what it looks like happens overnight is we get a little bit of wind. That wind dies down. Then tomorrow we get those storms over the Cascades. It's going to be a few isolated thunderstorms and rounds of showers. As we move into the day on Saturday, it will start with a little activity over central Washington. And then Saturday evening, we have the chance of seeing some activity here in eastern Washington and north Idaho. 91 degrees is where we top out to round out the work week. 90 on Saturday with few isolated showers, but I think those hold off until later in the day. 89 on Sunday. All in all, it's looking like a fantastic August weekend. All right, sounds good. Jeremy, we'll check back in with you later in the show. The Pioneer fire burning near Lake Chelan has now moved even closer to the town of Stahican. It has come within hundreds of feet of building buildings rather, and the flames are burning near the main roads. But our Seattle sister station reports that most residents are not leaving 
despite evacuation orders. Among those 70 residents staying put, one of them says the community is coming together and preparing for the worst. When you go through things like this, you really, really see the community shine, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. It's, it's beauty and the ugliness, and I, I, I appreciate it very much. Tonight, the Pioneer Fire has burned nearly 37,000 acres. It's just 13% contained. DNR says it's extremely dangerous to defy level three evacuation orders. And you may have seen a cloud of smoke looming over the Dishman Hills on your way home from work tonight. Spokane Valley firefighters say a four acre brush fire broke out at around five tonight. Crews were able to quickly contain that fire. DNR is staying on scene to mop up that fire overnight. And today marks one year since the wildfires door through the island of Maui, devastating the historic community of Lahaina. The disaster is considered the deadliest modern day fire in the U.S. Officials say recovery efforts could take years, even decades. Maui is hosting a week long series of events to remember the 102 people who lost their lives. Today, dozens participated in a paddle out ceremony. Meantime, across the globe, we are learning new details about the plot to attack a Taylor Swift concert in Vienna, Austria. Authorities say this 19-year-old suspect pledged allegiance to the Islamic State last month and planned to pose as police, driving a bomb-filled car into crowds outside the stadium before attacking fans with knives. Also in custody, a 17-year-old alleged accomplice who was working for a contractor at the concert venue. CBS spoke to a Washington man who traveled all the way to Austria to see Taylor Swift. I live in Seattle, Washington, uh, nine hour time difference. And yeah, I woke up at, I think it was 3 a.m. to try to get the tickets for here. And then, um, and then one of us in our family got them. And uh, yeah, we've been looking forward to it for, I don't know, like nine months or so. So yeah, quite the bummer, but also happy to be safe. Taylor Swift's tour is expected to go on next week with her final show in Europe scheduled to take place in London. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris have agreed to a debate next month with Trump proposing two other dates. ABC will host the September 10th debate with Fox and NBC hosting the others. Harris has not yet responded to Trump's new proposal for the September 4th and 25th debates. Trump also said the campaign has agreed to have Senator J.D. Vance face off against Governor Tim Walz in a vice presidential debate on CBS. Now this comes as Harris and her running mate Tim Walz rallied with auto workers in Detroit today while former President Trump held a press conference at his Mar-a-Lago home. The United Auto Workers have endorsed Harris and are planning to deploy union members across Michigan to help her win the state. Harris has picked up momentum since securing the nomination and naming Governor Walls as her VP choice, drawing thousands to hear her speak during the start of her campaign swing. Trump says Vice President Harris stole the nomination from President Biden, but that he is happy to be facing her instead. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time. But